just to give a context of his work. So this is a work that is being developed in a short scientific mission with a joint collaboration between Brisbane Group and uh, TNO. Where we have Wim here, and uh, he's my, let's say, my boss at TNO, which is leaving me yes. and uh, introduced me and uh, saying to me when I arrive, you arrive late, and you should know I'm joking. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, very friendly. Uh, so we did already a six weeks collaboration. Uh, I will just briefly show what we have to do. So as I said, and I put here a novel proactive ACGM tool, damage identification, finite element analysis and probabilistic methods. So we have three main tasks. So basically, we want to investigate the most probable damage scenarios and key performance indicators for our bridge structures. Okay? And then apply this idea to a case study, task two, the zero bridge. Okay? And the final task, which uh, we will do it uh, in later in the summer, it's exactly quantifying the value of this uh, proactive tool that you want to do. So what I will present here mainly is the first two tasks and some introduction to the last one. I've been already thinking about because it's the most challenging, at least personally for me, <coughs> as an expert on uh, structural engineering. So let's start. So how could we anticipate damage for the Lazarus bridge by using the available data? And the available data, what is the available data? So Basically, oh, uh, before that, just to structure my presentation, the decision scenario, I will just briefly present the structure, the military system, the infinite element model, the damage scenarios and performance indicators that were selected, then the methods that were applied were mainly, okay, this is more technical, responsible for smuggling, and uh, <laughs> based on updating, there is a, a key term, explanatory power, but this is based on, on Bayesian methods. Uh, then I will present some results, uh, try then in, get into the idea of the value of all this information based on the ACGM data. Uh, and finally, some open questions that I would like uh, to address, not only to Brisbane, because they are the owner of this bridge, but in the audience in general. So this is the Zero Bridge. <coughs> it's one of the longest bridges in Europe, and even worldwide. Okay, some indications about the monitoring system, but the most uh, impressive, I think, is that we have a number here that every year is arriving to the database around 1 million records. And so this is a big problem for Brisa, which what I do with 1 million records per year on a decision basis for this bridge. Okay. So we started also after having this monitoring system during my PhD in 2000, which I concluded in 2012. <laughs> we did a lot of finite element models for this bridge, not only for the main bridge that is here presented, but also for the approach firelets, there are <coughs> several models. And I just highlight here how accurate the model was to assess all the phases, the construction phase, the loading test, and the long term. Okay, these are very nice results. Of course, I selected the ones that most impressed. But of course, I think the most one challenging to predict is the long term, which is about these trends, is mainly affected by long term effects, like grip, shrinkage, and family effects. But overall, if I present these, we gain confidence in both sides, either from the <coughs> monitoring data or from the finite element model, because things match. And there is no calibration in the model. So we are confirming, either via modeling or either via observation, that things make sense, which brings confidence on the system. So in this context is how to take advantage of such information for this case, where we have a, a very important bridge, in terms of socio-economical <coughs> aspect, the impact is huge because it's one of the critical links around this one. We have very comprehensive information in relation to the structure, not only the monitoring data, but also the characterization of the materials, the loading, construction sequence, the monitoring data, the finite element model, so how we could extract benefits from this. Okay. So, there was a discussion in one of the previous meetings in this construction that I had with Wim and uh, uh, his colleague Agnieszka, which is not here, that perhaps we could look to this by looking to these impressive results, use this finite element model as a kind of a virtual bridge, because in fact this model, uh, it's so precise, I'm not saying that it's uh, a perfect model, but it's 
quite uh, precise in terms of the characterization of all important aspects of the structure, geometry, materials, loading, and time history, which is <laughs> proved by these results. And so in one of these discussions, we decide perhaps, OK, of course, one of the difficulties in civil engineering, when compared to mechanical engineering, is that we cannot build 100 bridges equal and then select five to demolish and do some tests, because we cannot. Whereas in mechanical, they can produce 1,000 cars, and then they select some of them to do a lot of tests. So we went to this idea that go around this by using this model as a virtual bridge. Okay? So we have a model in the, in the, <laughs> in the computer, but look it as a bridge uh, into a computer. Okay? This is the bridge. So we started thinking, okay, <laughs> let's try to explore some damage scenarios which we may think that might be the most critical or one of the critical ones for this bridge. So basically we come up with four. So we came up with some problems on the bearings, for example, with some <laughs> restraints in the movements. We have a second scenario about if we lose some press stress on the external tendons. Uh, a third one, which also is quite important because this bridge is located in a seismic zone in Lisbon. So we also explored some settlements of two piers, but the criteria is mainly because between these two piers it's the fact that the navigation channel, so it's critical also to follow up this particular zone of the bridge. And also a fourth one which is about, uh, let's suppose also that uh, whatever reasons, we have some loss of stiffness in some critical sections, okay? Perhaps above the piers and somewhere in the mid spines, we may have some cracks which will decrease the stiffness of these sections. Okay? So we pick this, we get into the model, uh, and so, as I'm saying, we will have four number scenarios, and from this big database that we have from the Zero Bridge, from the monitoring system, we selected 12 sensors, okay, which measure displacements, rotations, strains, and then <coughs> we come up with a huge database that. Uh, this is uh, what we, uh, is, was explained about response surface, which is able, for example, for one case, what it tells you, for example, for the damage scenario of loss of press stress, in terms of percentage, no press stress cause total failure, we may understand a little bit when we have, for example, a scenario of not only one tendon, but two tendons, try to understand how the sensors on the bridge might react, okay? So basically, all this database tells you some information how the sensors will move for these different four damage scenarios. Okay? So then we also included in this framework, it was, so this, uh, just to highlight, this information, in fact, is from this virtual bridge, because we cannot produce damage on the bridge, yeah? mm -hmm. but we can use the finite element model because it's so accurate to try to have some understanding how the sensor will change for these damage scenarios. With these pseudo measurements, then we had it a little bit of uncertainty, which in fact is derived from the data that is in the system. Because we are measuring, in fact, we are measuring all these quantities in the field. So we picked this, we had some uncertainty, and so then let's see how this can, let's say, uh, be able to detect some damage. So, then, my colleagues <laughs> at Tiedo, uh, they are developing a, an automatic probabilistic damage identification in Bayesian framework, so whatever it is. So let's, for example, look to the peer settlement, okay? So let's suppose in this case that uh, my dimensions here is that I may have only a settlement on peer 1 in this direction, or I may have also a settlement on peer 2 in this direction, or I can have a combination of all the possibilities, okay? From zero to one, in terms of a percentage of severity when you assume a specific one, okay? We assume for this illustration a settlement of 50 millimeters. So, this is my colleague. <coughs> I didn't tell him, them what was the magnitude. I didn't tell them how much the settlement value was, neither this one. I just told them that the, the damage was a pure settlement. I gave them the database that I presented before, and they did some guess, okay? So here, what they tell you 
is that from our <coughs> approach, I can tell you with 9% confidence that uh, the peer settlement in peer 1 is around 35% of the maximum value, and in peer 2 is around 25%. Then we have a meeting, this is real what I'm saying, and then I tell them what was the damage that I inputted, and in fact it was not so far, it is within the area that they predict, which is interesting. So this is what we say a proactive tool. But more than this, what was also interesting to produce uh, as an illustration, what shows here is pairs of sensors, okay? It's a double entry table, which tell you a little bit for all these 12 measurements that we have in the bridge, which combination might give you the most informative, uh, which pair is the most informative for this specific damage scenario. And for example, here we can see that when you combine the vertical displacement in second span with the third span, or the first with the second, in fact is the most informative. Which makes sense, of course, because if the settlement is occurring in, this, in these two peers, these vertical displacements here are quite sensitive to this change. Yeah? But this is what's interesting to say is that they didn't know what was the magnitude of this settlement. So what is more interesting here is that based on this type of results, we can build some more useful information, my point of view, which is about, uh, <laughs> as I said, we measure different things. Bearing displacements, vertical displacements, rotations, strains on the concrete, yeah? So perhaps we can break down that previous table in something that can tell you that for this scenario, damage scenario for the peer settlement, it is not perhaps worthwhile to invest in installing concrete, uh, strains in concrete, neither in clinometers, neither measuring the bearing displacements, perhaps the most effective way is to measure the deflections. It's the ones that gives you the most information about this specific damage. So, if we enlarge this scenario, uh, this analysis, now considering the four damage scenarios and keep these groups of measurements, we end up with a kind of a catalog uh, which tells you, perhaps, that depending on the damage scenario that you are analyzing, this type of outputs can tell you which type of uh, sensors you should use to identify more accurately the specific damage. Okay? For example, <laughs> if Brisa or the owner has some bridges with uh, scour problems and perhaps some peer settlements, this catalog might be interesting to consult and to understand, okay, if I have some problems in terms of peer settlements, if I look to this <coughs> information, I can see that the best investment might be using vertical displacements rather than investing in, which is something normal, dozens of strain gauges embedded in common. Yeah? So, the idea is, by picking now in this catalog, is now what we want to do now in August, <coughs> is quantify the value of the information. I've been thinking about it, and in fact, <laughs> last March I was invited to do a presentation at Bass in Germany. Well, Brizo was invited, and I went there, and I met some people, and I crossed with this nice paper from Sebastian. And uh, <laughs> this decision tree, I found it very interesting because at least as, to, as a starting point, I thought perhaps we can look to this example and you can look, for example, in this case, so I'm extracting this picture from the paper, which is here seated, and we could look to this, <coughs> no inspection or inspect with the support of the ACGM of the bridge, these are the two options. Then, about the damages, we can say, okay, let's now test this for these four damages. For these combinations, we need then to quantify the benefits and the costs along this decision tree that we have. Once we quantify these costs, we go back and then we can be able to quantify the value of the information for each damage scenario that we are exploring. And the final idea, at least at this stage, I might be wrong, but this is my idea, 
we can end up with something that could be a catalog for decisions. So basically, it's uh, something like this. So I presented this table before. We have different damage scenarios in this catalog. In this case, we have only four. This can be extended. We are only also using four different type of measurements, which can be also enlarged if you want. Then we can have this type of catalog. And then, based on the value of information, we can add a column here, which can tell you what is the value that you get as a decision maker if you use this information and these sensors to have, at least we hope, a benefit for a better maintenance of the structure. So, in terms of identifying the damage in, a, uh, in an advanced approach and not leaving the structure degradating until the next inspection that you will do. Okay. So, finally, as open questions, my question is, and mainly for Brazil perhaps, is this relevant to complement the visual maintenance operations for this specific bridge? Uh, something that is quite important to discuss is, and also for the quantification of the volume information of this approach, is what is the type and magnitude of the costs that are here involved, which I think is not only about maintenance and repair, but you are talking about this type of damages for this type of bridge, can be also reputation of the company, which is something that how we can quantify these, these costs. Um, also, what is important is that we should have the and a correct order of magnitude of these costs because they work as gradients in this problem. Yeah? So if you are working with thousands or millions or billions, things will change properly. And also, this is very clear as an objective for this short scientific mission is how relevant is this for the decision maker, for example, Prisma, in having a catalog of ACGM solutions for tackling support in the most likely damage scenarios, and mainly from the point of view of an infrastructure park, not only for one bridge, but perhaps you have a catalog when you have an infrastructure park with 1,000 or 2,000 bridges, could this catalog, as I presented here, be useful to get more knowledge, more effective approach and proactive for a better uh, management of the structures? I leave this question. Hello, thank you very much. And we address directly the questions, maybe the catalog question first. Or what do you think? Is such a catalog possible? Can it be valid for a class of structures? Is it useful? What is your idea? Hello, uh, can you do a from Norway? Yes. Uh, we have actually made a catalog like this for a class of bridges in our country or in our county, and it was very useful because it ended up with us changing the maintenance strategy from maintaining them to letting them expire and replacing them with new ones. And that was a class of bridges that we have several hundreds of. Okay. Yeah, so it was a very useful exercise to do. It was something like it? I'm not it's saying exactly. The visualization was not sense. similar, but the, the, the main pattern is similar. Okay, so I think I'm taking the correct way. I think so. Thank you. Any other reflections? Well, my name is Antonio Carrida Cam. I was the designer of the Zili Bridge. And uh, first of all, I will not worry more about the Zili Bridge behavior once we have such a good physician on it. <laughs> uh, now, uh, let's think a little about the rendering systems. I think, first of all, as it was in this case, the monitoring systems must be conceived on the design phase. It's very important. Second, we must define clearly the alarm levels. It's very important for the bridge owner to have uh, the, the alarms levels perfectly uh, defined. A specialized firm or laboratory or university can uh, supply the monitoring, uh, can conceive and supply the monitoring system. But after the construction, it's important 
Uh, there must be some entity uh, responsible for the collection and treatment of data, because one million data per year is a big data. And uh, it's also important to separate the effects that are, uh, uh, that we can uh, analyze with that data. For example, to separate the effects of the temperature from the creep and shrinkage. So we can clearly understand the breach behavior. For after that, I think it's very important the designer uh, be consulted to compare the real behavior of the breach with his model. Because uh, now perhaps Dr. Elder Souza knows the, the bridge better than I, <laughs> but I, uh, I think no, no. me and my team, uh, we know very much about it. And uh, there are, uh, the bridge was uh, open 10 years ago, and since then I consulted database two times only. So I don't know if it is okay or it's not okay. And I think it's important to know. So for you, which uh, work on the, let's say, the investigation phase, it's important to know that you have to transform the million of data in uh, several alarm uh, levels that will that must be clearly defined for the bridge owner to to act because after those alarms reached it's very important to have uh, clarified uh, to have uh, perfectly identified what action should be taken okay uh, one other thing that I, I, not in this presentation, but in, in another presentation I, I have seen, I think it's very important to work to increase the sensor life cycle. Because, for example, if we have uh, corrosion sensors with a life cycle, a life, a life a useful life of five years, it's not enough. We must have sensors that remain uh, operable. In 20 years or more. Okay? So, right, thank you very much for your presentation. <laughs> Just one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> after all this, it's very important that the collected data after treatment should be analyzed by code authorities because to help to calibrate the prescription of the codes. Okay. So, just a brief answer because I think it deserves. I realized that uh, 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 Professor Tony Lacamera prepared very well this uh, uh, discussion for, for his bridge, let's say, he was the designer. I can tell you that. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm working with Brisa to put this uh, data again available to whom Brisa decides that this should be consulting. Okay. Uh, all the data is properly stored and uh, I hope that you will have access because I think you are the father of the bridge in a certain way. Uh, and uh, you are right about the thresholds that we should have this very clearly defined. And I think should, uh, the, the design of the bridge should be take uh, an active part of this discussion of these thresholds. Because you design the bridge as well, so I think it makes sense to have this discussion with you. Um, and also something that is important is, okay, this is another discussion, but I don't believe as an expert that only putting thresholds to all the sensors is the best approach for the um, uh, uh, utilization of this system because you have around 400 sensors, if it is only basically putting thresholds, and then if something triggers that something goes up some thresholds, there must be have some, uh, as I presented, some knowledge behind to understand from the data what is happening. And then you can verify with the model. I think there is two levels here. Mm -hmm. I think there is a level, an operational level, which Brisa can do by themselves. 
there are some algorithms that help them to have some understanding of the patterns that is happening, then if something goes really wrong, or depending on the severity, they can go into a second level, which perhaps they can consult the designer or a consultancy, whatever. Okay, if it's really then uh, really severe, severe, then it's a third level, whatever it is. So, but this should be gradual. And I think there is a lot of work here to be done at the first level, which is the processing of this information from the data, which is not only include <coughs> restricted to put thresholds on the sensors. But I can continue the discussion with you if you are happy. I would like you are the design of the Thank you very much. Who is going to put the threshold? The designer. I'm saying that this should you, be you recommend the designer. I should, is that correct? I'm saying that this should be discussed with the designer. Yeah, with the designer. With the designer. So I think so. Yeah. And, it is, and the, the, knowledge, first, the knowledge that the designer has from the grid is quite relevant. For of course, design. of course. Therefore, I'm just. Yeah. In my opinion, we should not confuse uh, thresholders with automatic thresholders. We're not not talking about automatic actions. It is nothing, of course. Every, all the data should be analyzed. And in my opinion, as I told uh, late um, before, uh, in fact, the, the, the best, the, 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 the team in best conditions to analyze the information, in fact, is the design. They have, they have the model. They can interpret all the information. It's not, we're not talking about automatic thresholds or automatic actions. In fact, for this kind of complexity, it's nothing. We are talk, talking about analyzing the information and get the level of levels of alert. Alert to do anything, at least study. And the, the, the soon the better. We are talking about, in fact, my opinion, this could work very properly if, if we can, if we are able to uh, put together all the teams, teams from uh, uh, investigator, all this kind of technology of um, censoring, is crucial. Uh, as, as Antonio said, said, and I agree, uh, what to analyze, where to put the sensors, should be discussed with the, with the, with the designer, for sure. And uh, after that, threshold should be defined, at least to, to provide us levels to, to, the, the, to uh, trigger alerts. And we're not talking about uh, automatic actions. We are talking about a framework of decisions. The question is that should trigger uh, a process of decision in order to analyze if you should act earlier or you can postpone uh, in order. And the, the target in the end, this is the third part, the target in the end is to capture all the benefits of this instrumentation, thinking of the sensory. Um, to take the, be the best decisions along the long life cycle of the bridge. The target is, in the end of the life cycle, we can save the most, also uh, decreasing the risk and maximizing all the information, in fact, we are, we are gathering, in fact. Thank you very much. So, summarizing, I think we all agree. Yes. <laughs>